Hello fellow programmers, this is Pavel and this is part two of the bank accounts exercise in Visual Basic. In the previous exercise, uh, I mean previous video, I showed you what we will be creating and now it's time to actually create it. So again, I already made a form, uh, I'm not gonna be wasting your time, you know, you watching me make a form, just a bunch of drop down menus, uh, some you know, one drop down menu, some text boxes. These are just read only because they will be only displaying as text boxes for the deposit and withdrawal. Uh, these are all groups for checks, transfer, and deposit. So, fairly simple, and of course, a grid view to display the transactions. If I run it now, there's nothing there, it's just the form, and uh, the form alone. Uh, has uh, this drop down menu has checking and savings hard coded in it uh, and that's really all so uh, basically if you go over here and edit items I just added checking and savings to it so that being said let's get it uh, to do some coding so first thing let's do the account uh, class so I'll just right click add class and I'll call it account very predictable so the account will basically be just two things it will be check-in and uh, savings account and it will have uh, a name and a balance and it, within the balance we will have to kind of determine whether we can perform the transaction. Like if it's a withdrawal, we have to make sure that the balance is uh, after the withdrawal would not be less than zero. If it is, we're not gonna allow the transaction. So uh, the exercise alone itself, sorry, uh, if you read the uh, instructions, it also wants us to create some events in sufficient funds and transaction committed. Uh, at appropriate time so obviously insufficient funds would be raised if you try to perform a transaction that would leave insufficient funds and transaction committed means well it says that uh, the transaction has been okay that we could perform it and we did and uh, there were no problems with it so let's go to our account class and declare two properties I'll do a public public property account name and it's going to be a string and the other one the other property will be account uh, balance and it's gonna be I'll just do double for the to keep the money uh, money precision for the decimals all right so um, I will create a constructor so sub new and uh, in it uh, we will pass as a parameter an account name so I'll just call it a name a string so that's gonna be whether it's checking or whether it, or savings so account name that's our property will equal whatever we pass to it so it's gonna be checking or savings we're not gonna be passing balance, balance is gonna be calculated. So it's, we're not gonna just pass it into our constructor. So uh, next thing we can do, uh, we can do something like uh, public, and it's gonna be a function. It will get, get account balance. Uh, we're gonna do it this way because we're going to of determine whether it's a withdrawal or a deposit if it's a deposit we will add to the balance and if it's a withdrawal we will obviously deduct from it and we will return the new value for the account balance property so uh, that's our that's our function and uh, we'll need to pass something to it we'll need to pass the what account it is uh, so I'll just call transaction type, not account, sorry, what type it is, uh, whether it's deposit or uh, withdrawal, and it's going to be as boolean, 
Uh, I'm just gonna do it as a, if it's true, it's deposit, if it's false, it's a withdrawal. It's just two, two options, so boolean works just fine for that. And an amount, transaction amount, that's double. And we will return double, because that's what our account balance is. And we are going to be returning the account balance. So, uh, within the function itself, we will just do simply, if the transaction type is true, in other words, if it's a deposit, uh, then we can do something like, so let me just comment it quickly. If T type equals true, then deposit, otherwise we're drawable. So if it's a deposit, our account balance property will be increased, so plus equal, by the T amount, which is the parameter passed to, uh, to this function that we are going to be passing uh, from the from the transactions else so if it's not true that means it's a f it's false so account balance minus equals we will deduct the amount from it and at the end we will simply return account balance and it will update our property so that was fairly simple and uh, we need to be able to uh, check the balance. We need to be, make sure that we have enough money uh, in the account in order to perform the transaction. It's for the withdrawals, the deposit, we don't really need to do that at all. Uh, but we need to make sure that the user doesn't try to uh, deposit zero or negative number. So uh, again, let's do public function and it's gonna be I'll just check check account balance and it's going to be a function that returns uh, a boolean if it returns true then it's good we are, we're good to go otherwise there was some problem either the user tried in uh, enter wrong number like zero or the number was too high and we would have insufficient funds and uh, in order to do this, we need to uh, basically see, uh, again, pass the transaction amount as double, and we will need to pass, I'll just call it deposit as boolean. Uh, that basically means that, again, we need to make sure, if it's a deposit, we don't need to check uh, whether it's insufficient funds because we are adding to the account, but we need to just we need to still just check whether the user is trying to enter zero as a deposit. Uh, I forgot s boolean. All right, so um, if t amount is greater, I mean less or equal to zero, then uh, that's basically invalid transaction so uh but it's not insufficient funds so i will i will create another e uh, event and i'll call it uh yeah let's just do that raise event i don't have the event uh created yet but uh, i will just do that right away so let, i'll just call it amount less than zero it could be equal to zero but whatever that's just for the for the event name and we will return false. The transaction cannot be finished because there's a bad value trying to be be entered. Now, if the value is greater than zero, then we can train, uh, check for insufficient funds. But we only check it if it's not a deposit. So uh, again, deposit adds money, so we don't need to check for insufficient funds. So if not deposit which we are passing over here as boolean so <coughs> if deposit is not true means that it's a withdrawal and account balance if we deduct the t amount from it and it's less than zero then that's with insufficient funds if you have thousand dollars and to you try to deduct thousand and a one you'll get less than zero 
cannot do that insufficient fund so I will raise event I'll just call it in so efficient funds and again I will return false from this function and basically it means again do not add anything to the text files do not uh, update the text files because the transaction is not committed it cannot be performed and if we pass both of these uh, checks then we can do return true everything checks out we have good value that is greater than zero and if it was a withdrawal we have a, a, a balance that is not insufficient for the transaction so we can perform that so um, let me just quick little comment check account balance for we oh, except it's not I'll just copy it here and paste it because that's the this check that's what is uh, checking so I have the um, the events that I need to first create so I'll just create them public event and the first will be the uh, amount less than zero and public event insufficient funds there you go all right um let me see what else do i need well i have two accounts i have checking and saving so and the way this works is when i change the drop down from savings to checking and from checking to savings my account needs to change as well so uh, mm, you now let me do another event I'll just do public uh, if I can spell it right now public event I'll call it account change and we can pass the account name to it a string and basically switch them if we are passing check-in then we will switch it to savings because we are changing the account and vice versa so over here let me just do the event public sub change account that will call the or raise the event raise event account change and we pass the account name property to it as a and uh, we will then uh, in the in the index change for the drop down we will determine what accounts we receive in as a parameter and switch it to the other one uh, I think that might be all for the uh, for the account there might be more later we'll see how it goes so this is the account class and uh, that's enough for this video in the next video we will continue with this uh, exercise so uh, stick around and I'll see you in the next video take care